Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Dimitris here again from Obi Pixel. I just want to run through something interesting with regards to what's happening right now with Walt Disney and of course the absolute abomination of a television series that they've created. You'll probably notice from my previous videos, I do mention this a few times and I've also given a bit of a breakdown as to why and how Disney is getting so much money to produce, you know, their shows and TV shows and films and whatever. And, and it's all down to, you know, BlackRock and State Street and uh, Vanguard and many other companies that have invested in Disney. But that's not what this video is about. Let's dig a little bit deeper and see this in a different light. Now, many people and a lot of the people that I follow have made great videos on this as from Heel vs. Babyface, Nodrotic, Gary from Nodrotic, uh, Critical Drinker, Mauler, there's so many companies, Geeks and Gamers, so many people on YouTube that are actually talking about the Acolyte and really digging in, seeing the episodes, which is such a shame. <laughs> I feel sorry for them. And uh, having to report back to the, the people, the, the, the YouTubers out there. And thank you guys for doing that for us because, and the ladies that are doing this for us, because, uh, you know, it is, it is a very difficult thing to go through these shows because they are badly, badly, badly filmed and uh, badly written. So let me give you a little bit of an interesting scenario. Now, like I mentioned in my previous videos, Disney received $180 million just for the filming of the, of the actual television series, The Acolyte. That's not including the marketing budget, which is probably another 150. All right, so... Let's just take a look at what are they they've what they've documented as spending 180 million dollars, okay? Okay, so that's eight episodes. Each episode is about 35 to 39 minutes minus the credits, let's say 30 minutes to be exact, because there's a lot of padding inside each episode and it's it's a disaster. And if you calculate 22.5 million dollars per episode. That is roughly $800,000 per minute that they're burning. And then you wonder, where is all this money going? Well, let's take a look at this. I'm going to take you into something really interesting. I'm going to take you a look into, show you Wikipedia, just very briefly, although you can't really 100% trust Wikipedia, just to give you a nice little structure of what's going on. Here's the breakdown. You've got the television series, The Acolyte. And let's bring myself up here so you can see me talking. And basically, it says, also known as the Star Wars, the Acolyte. No, it's not. It's nothing to do with Star Wars. You know, a bit of a lightsaber here and there means nothing. In fact, throughout this entire first three episodes, not only have they managed to destroy every single thing that George Lucas has created in terms of the first three movies and the, 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 the prequels, essentially, the first six films have been destroyed now. They've, they've, I don't know what Leslie Headland has, in her mind, but she's completely and utterly destroyed this franchise. But let's not go too crazy with this, because many other YouTubers are actually digging into each one of these topics and they're really digging deep. But I'm just going to show you very superficially on the outside what's really going on. Where's all this $180 million going? Well, if you look very carefully, they've got Leslie Headland, the showrunner, and of course, one of the actresses is her partner, which of course, that's nepotism. So we can understand. A lot of the money gets pocketed by these two, which is obvious. It happens a lot in, in Hollywood. And then you've got a bunch of actors, which in all honesty, I've only seen two particularly good actors here. And that would be probably, probably somebody like Carrie Ann Moss, which is very brief in this film and uh, potentially Lee Young Jae, but that's, that's saying a lot. But that's not really the big deal about this. There's only three episodes so far being sent out, okay? But if you look very carefully, if you look at the breakdown, the editors, Mika, uh, Leskinen, and Cheryl Potter, then they don't have great pedigree in the industry. Cinematography, Chris Teague, also, you know, not massive pedigree in the industry. But more importantly, if we come down here, 
and we look at the writers, you see, what they're mentioning is that a writer's room was assembled in 2021. So Leslie Headland, or as we call her, the stupid headlamp, made this group of writers to pitch this deal to the studios. And <laughs> you have, apart from Dave Filoni, right, which is involved in the, Star, in, the, in the Star Wars projects, you have these writers as Jason McElf, Charmaine de Grety, like, I, I might be butchering the name, so I apologize there, Jasmine Filoni, uh, Eileen Shim, Claire Keechel, Cora Donna, Cameron Squires, Jocelyn Bayer, and Jeff Jen Richards. So let's break down each person, right? So let's come down here. First of all, let's take a look at uh, Jason McCuff, okay? He's only been involved in a few things in terms of writing. Just a few things. Butter's one of the comedies. And uh, surprisingly, he's worked on Heathers and Marcel Marcel. These are all very short television series and episodes. And I mean, you can see the Acolyte already is a shambles. Heathers, it was a complete dud when it comes to a television series. Marcel Marcel is a short, made nothing in the industry. Butter had some promise. Butter had some promise. I have to agree with it. So there is something with his writer, which could have gone much better. But unfortunately, you're only as good as your last project and as you're good as good as your failures. And his 6.2, well, unfortunately, he's dropped to 3.6 now. Charmaine, the great, or the grati. I, I, I don't know how you say that. Now, she's Emmy nominated, Emmy nominated, okay? The interesting thing is she has worked on some interesting stuff, but House of the Dragon, Okay, fair enough. I give her credit for that. Daisy Jones and the Six. Fair enough. A little bit of credit. Manhunt. Okay. So she shows a lot of promise as a writer. I can't argue with that, but I'm not saying that was brilliantly done by her. Jasmine Floroni or, or Floranoi. Uh, I hope you I hope I'm saying it right. Worked on these shows. And I mean the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Dud. Truth be told, dud. Hand of God, dud. Irrespective of what they're getting in terms of 7.1 stars and whatever, that's just the critics. It's what the people really want. You know, the people that are watching, that's what you must look at. Don't ever look at critics. Critics will always lie because they want to keep media access. They want to keep on going to the shows, keep on getting these invites. It's obvious. It's obvious. It's, it's a very skewed system. Arlene Shim. Couple of episodes, House of the Dragon, you're starting to see a pattern here. Nowhere back, didn't do much. Light as a feather, mm, had some promise, but really didn't do much. But at least there's something about it. But really, one episode on House of the Dragon. So there's not enough pedigree here. But fine, people have got to start somewhere, right? Except you don't start on Star Wars. Uh, Claire Kitchell, uh, a bit of Watchmen, the OA. Fair enough. Land of Imagined Things, God knows what that is. And more importantly, still not enough of a pedigree. Cora Donna. Actually, this chap does show, so he does show promise. Uh, considering that he's worked on the Mr. Robot series and Dune Prophecy, I'll give, I'll give this chap, Cora Donna, a bit of credit. I think he's got the highest pedigree out of all the writers in this list here because of the success of those shows. And, and, and just the way they were written, I think it's pretty impressive. So, yes, he's got a future as a writer, there's no doubt. And they should have paid him more than all the others. Uh, Cameron Squires worked on Agent Alvis, Final Space, One Division, complete failures. Absolute failures in the industry. And now the Acolyte, which is, I don't know where this person's going with writing. I honestly don't know. We've got Jocelyn Bio. A brand newcomer, fair enough. Can't really dart her in any way because she hasn't worked on much. Um, you know, she's from Ghana. As a Ghanaian descent, uh, she's brand new coming out of the art industry. As a playwright, fair enough. You know, you can't really argue with somebody who's brand new. But at the same time, why put someone like this in a massive franchise like Star Wars? Why not build your 
your talents up slowly and carefully with other films and harness your skills. I mean, seriously. And of course, Jen Richards actually has done a lot of work. Uh, maybe not all successful, but in terms of a lot of work, absolutely. But as you can see, you know, you're looking at you're looking at a personal life. Either a lot of these writers were gay, as in lesbian or bisexual, or they have and got the right skills. Most, most importantly, it's not about their gender and it's not about their sexual orientation that really is troublesome because people have a right to do whatever they want in their lives. It's not up to anybody else to discuss that. But what is more, what is more important is merit and skills. Now, I give credit to Jen. I mean, you know, worked on a lot of projects. Fair enough. Yeah, decent writing. Some cases have been pretty good. Um, some of the products, decent. But at the same time... If you look at this entire writer's group, does that warrant $180 million for the series? $22.5 million per episode and $800,000 per minute on the episode. Does that warrant that amount of writers? Come on, people. I've looked at the first episode, the second and the third. I never wrote as bad myself when I was 10 years old. I'm not blaming my own trumpet, but there are far better writers out there. This clearly shows to me, Disney may have for a very long time been very good at producing good films in the film industry, but they just don't know how to create television programs. Because every single series and every single episode and every single series they have created in the last 15 years has been a complete failure. Of course, this particular show is an absolute failure. This is what we call the nail in the coffin. How do you go wrong like this, Disney? 15% average score audience. Average audience uh, score. I'm not, you, whoever is interested in this, you, you shouldn't really be concerned about the critics and what they say because the critics get paid money or they get given access to go and watch these shows and do, write good things and write important positive things. And it's, it's a very uh, skewed, biased, and in, all, in, all, in my own opinion, completely false narrative when it comes to the critics. When it comes to the audience score, you know you're getting what you're getting. Because if 15% of the audience is still with you, you're kind of lucky because I've seen all three episodes and I think they're going to lose more audience here. It is a disaster, Disney. Absolute disaster. You should be getting 80% on audience. This is Walt Disney. It used to be the gold standard in films, in, 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 in characters. What are you doing? What are you guys doing? You paid $180 million for this absolute abortion of a show. And it's only going to get worse. Only going to get worse. Every single thing that these this cast talks about, it's all about how gay these this show is. How this is the gayest Star Wars. How, you know, they are thinking that they're going to push the ideology and the, 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 the gender stuff across. Guys, you know... Your orientation in life and what you feel like doing in the bedroom is really something we don't care about. As fans, we don't really care about that. We care about, you know, being entertained, being given great storylines, great characters, something that we can use for escape. This is not helping people. The acolyte is not allowing people to one enjoy star wars number two you're destroying the law of star wars number three you've destroyed everything that's come before star wars which makes me believe that one you cannot write and create as well as george lucas so all you're prepared to do is destroy what he's made so that you can rebuild something that you believe is going to work for people but can't you see already that it's a downright failure let alone the fact that you got it on Disney Plus and you're not launching it anywhere else or licensing it anywhere else. You actually cannot make any money out of this. You're going to lose not only 
money that you have lost because it's 180 million plus the marketing budget close to 280 million i'd say you probably 300 million because you're not divulging all your details i live in the uk and i know that a lot of the stuff can be filmed in the uk and the kind of stuff and money you get back in terms of tax write-offs but more importantly you don't really document everything that you're spending so it's obviously around 300 million so to be successful you have to make more than double something close to 750 million but you're not doing that anyway because it's on disney plus which makes absolutely no sense so what it shows me is they don't care all the writers and of course leslie headland and the entire executive crew you money laundering you are plain and simply money laundering you're taking advantage of BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard, JP Morgan Chase, all these companies who, who are lending money, and you, you're creating trash, which doesn't make any business sense whatsoever. Because if you were, if you were a real business, you know, if Disney, Walt Disney and everybody, all the executives, especially Kathleen Kennedy, who's an absolute Neanderthal in the industry, the fact that you are not making money out of this, and all you're pushing is an ideology that basically people don't give a damn about. People don't care. They're not interested in your crap. So at the end of the day, they're interested about entertainment. And you can't even do that properly. You can't even entertain people properly. And you can't make money. So what's going to happen is these loans are going to fold. Disney's going to fail. Not that Headland, Leslie Headland and everybody else in the cast gives a crap about the studio. Because they don't, they don't care. They got paid. They're going to walk away. <sighs> the long-term repercussions out of this is that you're getting to the point where you're pushing Disney in the point where there's this, there's no return now. Disney has not only lost 95% of its fans because they've lost the majority of their fans, but they're also going to lose that 5% that they decided to go for and try and attain with all this gender ideology nonsense. But more importantly... All this terrible writing, terrible directing, terrible producing, poor dismal quality in computer graphics and CGI, terrible stuff. That, and, 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 and look, the acting in some cases is pretty good, but other cases just disastrous. So at the end of the day, what you're creating is so bad that not only are you going to lose money out of the show Walt well, Disney but you're going to lose subscribers from Disney Plus and basically you're done it's over for Disney what still shocks me is that you still have investors but it makes a lot of sense because you know you've got Vanguard and Streets, State Street and you have BlackRock and of course they've invested big in the companies and they've told other investors ah, ah you're not leaving because if you leave you're not going to get your investment further on down the line so it's all a big bribe you guys have going through a massive denial of service it's a denial of service because you're not only denying the consumer the right to be entertained and that's why they're paying for this but at the same time you are destroying yourselves all because you're listening to companies like BlackRock and State Street and Vanguard and all those companies who are investing money in you. It's not going to last very long, trust me. They're going to call on your loans. They're going to stop giving you money and eventually Disney won't have the cash flow. So what you've done now is you have destroyed Star Wars. And the worst is, and I'm not talking about Star Wars that came after the the three prequels from George Lucas. I'm talking about everything else after that because you see the thing is, and, and, and you wonder why fans are angry. And why, why Leslie Headland and everybody else who's executives here, why are you pressing the media to, to go against your fans and blame the fans? Are you out of your effing minds? Once you reach apathy, people won't buy your stuff anymore. They won't subscribe anymore. Disney's gonna fail completely. Is that what you want? Because if that's what you want, all the other independents are going to make your money. It's idiotic. It's bad business. Stupid business. It doesn't make any sense to me. So if your one episode, 22.5 million, costs more money than one of the most successful films that was ever created 
in the last two years, roughly, of Godzilla Minus One, which was not only better written, not only better produced and directed and acted, but actually made a humongous profit and also wasn't inflated in money, only 20 million something dollars to make. And the graphics, the computer graphics are Ten times better. I, I'm being up pessimistic here. They're, they're basically 100 times better than the Acolyte. So I have to agree here with the YouTubers that are out there. As from Heel vs. Babyface. I have to agree. This is not the Acolyte. This is the Echo Shite. This is not the Acolyte. This is the Wokalite. People are tired of all this nonsense. They're tired of all this political agenda. They're tired of their message that you're trying to put across. We're not interested. People don't really worry or care about other people's orientation, gender politics, yourself trying to push yourself into the narrative. We don't really care about that, people. Everyone has a right to do what they want to do in their lives. There's no prejudice against that. There's no malice against that. You creating that prejudice and malice in your own heads. You're creating that divide, pretty much the same way that BlackRock and State Street and Vanguard are using that divide to actually control and conquer all the investment that they're investing with. And you're falling into the trap. And then, of course, Disney is so short-sighted with Bob Iger, Kathleen Kennedy and Dave Filoni and all these idiots that are basically there and Kevin Feige and all them. It just, you guys, you are abysmal. You truly are the worst bunch of executives that have come out in history. I mean, they're going to write history books about this. So I wanted to give you a little quick little roundup on this video and just give you just a heads up and just explain to people who are the normies out there. This show, which cost $180 million, is burning $800,000 minutes per, uh, $800, per minute. $800,000 per minute. Do you know what kind of writer you can get for that? What kind of producers, directors, and writers you can get for that? This series, in all honesty, with its computer graphics and everything, with all the acting and everything, shouldn't be anything more than a million, million five, maybe two million dollars to make. If that, because of the quality of it, it's just, a, it's a disaster. It's an absolute disaster. And I feel, I feel really, really sad for for Disney that's going through this because you don't see it and all you're going to do is double down and triple down and all it's going to do is you're going to create even more apathy and more anger and at ultimately you're going to lose every fan you have not just the original fans that you should have kept 90 percent of them it's stupid absolutely stupid and this concept of let's go back into let's go back into this here and let's go back into this over here and it's you know what uh <laughs> let's come down to this list over here look at this let's read up to let's read up to there actually just up to there is fine actually yeah da, 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 a bit further there up to there Headland, Leslie Headland, or the, the looseless head, uh, headboard, basically. Wanted to explore Star Wars, the franchise. It's a, it's, it's a disaster calling it the Star Wars something. From the perspective of the villains. Yeah, but Leslie Headland, who are the villains? Because what you're making out in the entire, this entire series, you're making out as the Jedi is becoming the, the villains. And you're portraying the evil witches so far as the good, the good guys. And are you out of your mind? She felt that the High Republic era would be the best point in the timeline to do this because the Sith, who are the villains in the films, are considerably outnumbered and in hiding during this time. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Lucasfilm also wanted to depict the time period on screen after recently launching a publishing initiative set in the era because they wanted to explore new parts of Star Wars and the timeline. What new parts of Star Wars? Witches have been in the extended universe for many, many 
many episodes and many books and that. So you, you should have done the correct thing. You didn't do it the right way. And then talking about the force as the thread. What is wrong with you? And then you say you cannot wield the thread. You cannot wield its power. Yet immediately you start wielding it and you start pushing each other away and you start doing stuff. It's just so contradictory, this writing. So stupidly put together. I mean, I even saw the third episode where you you throw a lamp on the ground and all of a sudden, you know, this whole mountain's on fire. It's made out of stone. How does it all go into fire? What, you're going to say, oh, that the, star, that the Jedi's created the fire and blew the, the electrical equipment up? I mean, really, seriously, Headland? Leslie, you are a thief in Hollywood. You've stolen the money because... You've created rubbish. You've created absolute rubbish. He's saying the Akalat is a mystery thriller with a serialized story. There's nothing mysterious about the show. There's no thrilling part about the show. It's completely boring. People are not acting correctly. Their lines, their dialogue is abysmal. My God, I've seen worse dialogue between two people who have actual head problems in a mental institution. Sorry, I've seen better dialogue. What am I saying? Worse dialogue. Your dialogue is worse than people that I've seen in a mental institution. I don't understand you guys. It doesn't make any sense. But, you know, let's put it in context. The reason why you don't give a damn, Leslie Headland and everybody else, like Kathleen Kennedy, who are just pally pals, and you basically just, you know, you've got a grudge match. You feel like being going up against everything that George Lucas and everybody else has done for you. And basically now you're just destroying everything. I mean, it's obvious. You can see it a mile away. We're not that stupid. We are fans. We are intelligent. Don't be stupid with us. Don't preach to us. So at the end of the day, a hundred and eighty million dollars. Twenty two point five million dollars per episode. Eight hundred thousand dollars per minute is being burnt. And people are on the streets not having any food to eat because they cannot be the writers for the show because you've hired morons. Or you've hired idiots or you've hired, more importantly, less caliber, less merited writers, which is your biggest problem. Some of the writers are actually pretty good that you have. But you need to have very good showrunners. You need to have incredible frontline writers. People that you've thrown out of the companies. People that you've let go because of the Me Too era. Because now what you're creating is just garbage. Absolute garbage. What a shame. What a shame. So I'm not going to going to go into the main details of this. But I mean, very clearly. Very clearly. 15% in Rotten Tomatoes for the audience score. And it's it's going lower and lower and lower with every episode. Whew! Leslie Headland, your head needs to roll. You know, growing up with Star Wars and having wonderful memories with my father and my mom and my cousins, my little sister going to watch the Star Wars, when I was a young kid going to watch the Star Wars for the first time, we're talking 50 years ago. Those memories will always be in my mind. And what you're doing with these shows is you're trying to tarnish those memories, but you're idiotic because all you're doing is you're showing to us that since the moment that Walt Disney purchased Lucasfilm for whatever amount of money it was, $4 billion, you've lost triple that amount of money already. Triple that amount of money. And you just hire at Disney, I'm talking about. And Disney's hiding it amongst all the other sort of categories in their businesses so that they don't show their shareholders what's happening. Of course you're doing it. It's obvious. But <laughs> even the media is, is pushing this down. Are you, you guys, there's something wrong with you. There's truly something wrong with you. Anyway, that's the end of my rant. I'm not going to go into major details. I'm certainly not going to watch the rest of the episodes. I'm not interested. In fact, I'm going to get more entertainment out of watching all the other YouTubers I follow talking about these episodes because they are more entertaining. They're more truthful. They're more down to earth. They are speaking honestly about how all the fans are reacting. And what is really wrong with these episodes? I mean, when there's something good, we talk about it. But 
Az from Heel vs. Babyface, Gary Beekler from ne Nedrotic, Critical Drinker, Mauler, ah, Geeks and Gamers, Ryan Kinnell and Jeremy, um, Odin from Odin interview, uh, Reviews and that, uh, Comics Division, X-Ray Girl, Chrissy Mayer, I can go on and on and on, on, you know, FNT crew basically, and, and Eric July. Guys, I mean, this is why I follow you guys, because you speak the truth. And I cannot sit idle anymore and not talk about these things. I'm not going to go into the nth degree and be angry. I'm just going to point out the obvious. Disney, you're done. You've now nailed a nail in the coffin that's going to take you down. And it's just so sad to see. So sad to see the number one gold standard in kids and teenage entertainment is now the worst on the planet. What a shame. What a shame. Walt Disney himself will be turning in his grave. Anyway, thank you everyone for listening. My name is Demetrius Harrigan from Obi Pixel and I'm signing out. <laughs>